Welcome to this Tutor to You revision video that looks at what an ecosystem is and how the different components interact. This is part of Paper 1, Unit B, The Living World. Let's start off by defining what an ecosystem is. An ecosystem is a natural system. It is the interaction of biotic and abiotic components. Biotic components are those that are living and organic, whereas abiotic components are non-living and inorganic. Ecosystems can be on a range of scales. They can be local or small scales, which we sometimes refer to as a habitat. So for example, a freshwater pond or a deciduous woodland. They can be regional, such as large areas of forest or moorland. Many of these in the UK form parts of national parks, such as the Peak District or the Lake District. Or they can be global biomes, such as the tropical rainforest found along the equator, hot deserts or cold environments like the tundra or the poles. There are three types of biotic components found in an ecosystem. These are animals, including mammals, insects, birds and fish. Plants, including trees, shrubs, grasses, mosses and algae, which provide both food and shelter for many species of wildlife. And bacteria and fungi. These microorganisms are decomposers, so they break down dead matter to release nutrients back into the soil to be recycled. The biotic components in an ecosystem are dependent on a number of abiotic factors. These are air, so we're talking here about oxygen needed for respiration and carbon dioxide needed in the process of photosynthesis. They also need sunlight, which again is needed for photosynthesis and it is needed for plant growth. Living components need to have access to water, which is needed for plant growth, but also as a drinking source and they need to have minerals from rocks and soils. Rock type is really important in the formation of soils. The weathering releases nutrients from the rocks into the soil. And soils contain nutrients and water that are essential to plant growth, as well as providing a habitat for insects and decomposers. Biotic and abiotic components are linked physically, such as animals eating plants, and chemically, for example, acids in rainwater speeding up the process of decomposition. Okay, let's talk about nutrient cycling. Nutrients are foods that are used by plants and animals to grow, and ecosystems are dependent on nutrient cycling. There are two main sources of nutrients, rainwater washing chemicals out of the atmosphere and weathered rock releasing nutrients back into the soil. When plants or animals die, the decomposers help to recycle the nutrients, making them available once again for the growth of plants or animals. Decayed material adds more nutrients to the soil and these nutrients are then taken up by the plant roots. Over time, organic matter will die and decompose so the nutrients can continue to cycle around the ecosystem. Certain conditions cause organic matter to break down more quickly, enabling more plant growth, such as in the tropical rainforest biome. There are a number of key terms that are essential to understand in the ecosystem topic. The first one is producers. These convert energy from the environment, which is mainly sunlight, into sugars, which we also know as glucose. The most obvious producers are plants that convert energy from the sun by photosynthesis and they use this to produce their own tissue in leaves and stems. Our second important term then is photosynthesis. So all ecosystems are fueled by energy from the sun or solar energy and without it they would not be able to work. This energy occurs in different forms as heat, as light or stored as food energy in plants and the muscles of animals. However, some organisms make their own food using energy from the sun. The ingredients are carbon dioxide, water and minerals, and the process is known as photosynthesis. Finally, you need to know what consumers are. These get energy from the sugars produced by the producers. A pond snail is a good example of a consumer because it eats marine plants. However, there are different types of consumers in an ecosystem. Herbivores only eat plants such as rabbits and cows. These are also known as primary consumers. Carnivores only eat other animals and they usually eat herbivores. So an example of this would be the fox. They're also known as secondary consumers. 
and top carnivores which hunt and eat other carnivores as well as herbivores are right at the top of the food chain, for example lions. Animals that eat both plants and animals are known as omnivores. Finally, let's think about the energy transfer that occurs within ecosystems. Food chains show the transfer of energy in the form of food from organism to organism, and the arrows show that energy transfer and the direction it's going in. Food webs, on the other hand, show the interdependent food chains within an ecosystem, and they enable you to see what would happen if you remove one aspect. As you move up the food chain, the amount of energy reduces. There are two reasons for this. Firstly, animals often don't eat a plant or other animals in its entirety. So, for example, animals don't eat the bones of other animals. And much of this energy is lost through excretion. Secondly, energy is lost at each level as it's being used for important functions, such as respiration and digestion. However, most energy is actually simply used trying to stay alive. So, for example, searching for food and chasing prey, which can be exhausting and time consuming for minimal reward. That concludes this Tutor to You revision video focusing on ecosystems and how the different components interact. Thank you for watching.